<laughs> you are not all that. Anyone could play in a band if they wanted to. Don't pay Paul any mind. People like him just bring other people down so they can make themselves feel better. Oh, I get it. He's just criticizing me to cover up the pain of his own failed dreams. You cut deep, Joe. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button, just like Pixar hits all of our hearts every single time they drop a movie. Leave a comment down below telling me about what your favorite Pixar movie is, and of course subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. So Soul is the new Pixar movie streaming exclusively on Disney+. Plus. I don't review many animated films because honestly they just most times don't interest me. For the longest time, Pixar was the only company making animated films that I had at least a little bit of interest in. And there's a reason for that because Pixar always managed to find a way to put these more adult themes and messages in their movies. That's kind of the beauty of them. They work on many different levels and they appeal to many different age groups. And I'm here to say that Soul is no exception to that. In fact, I don't know if it's just because where I'm at in life, but for some reason this movie in particular kind of spoke to me on a different level. Soul stars the voice talents of Jamie Foxx and Tina Fey, both of whom do a really good job with the very well-written material that they're given. I like the way you die, boy. The music is actually composed by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, which I thought was really weird. So it's definitely showing that they're becoming major players in Hollywood, and they're very versatile in the movies that they're working on. Soul follows a middle school music teacher named Joe Gardner, who seeks to reunite his soul and his body, who are unexpectedly separated just before he's about to receive his big break as a jazz musician. Think about that synopsis for a second. Does that sound like a children's movie? No, not at all. It sounds more like a sequel to Whiplash or some shit like that. Do you think... You're out of tune? Yes. Then why the fuck didn't you say so? This film kind of draws the line between following your dreams and it shows you how making that dream an obsession can negatively impact you. So in the beginning of the story when Joe gets a full-time job as a teacher, he doesn't really appreciate that because all he can really think about is becoming this legendary jazz player. Even though everyone around him is telling him how much of a good thing this is that he has a stable job. Especially his mom, and this is such a mom thing to do, but all she really wants is for him to have some security. But Joe initially takes that the wrong way and he sees it as her trying to stifle his dreams. I think it sends a good message that just most moms out there just want nothing but the best for you. No! So Joe finally gets this gig of a lifetime, and what happens? He unexpectedly dies. Or he's at least close enough to death that his soul separates from his body. So his soul is sent to the great beyond, or just on the outskirts of it. Try to think of the further from Insidious, but a lot less creepy and more light. So he's put on the path that heads toward the light, but he refuses to do so because he still has unfinished business on Earth. Eventually, after he sneaks off, he kind of ends up in this place called the Great Before, which is where he meets 22. The idea behind the Great Before is it's the place where new souls find their spark. And basically that's whatever their inspiration is to live. So Joe acts as her de facto mentor against his wishes, but 22 just has no desire to go. So we have a character that's desperate to live, maybe for the wrong reasons, and we have a character that has no desire to live because she doesn't know what it means to live. That's some heavy stuff for a quote-unquote kids movie. I liked in this movie how they had this physical representation of the zone, which is basically the place where artists and musicians and athletes go in their mind when they lose themselves and what they do. There's a pretty cool joke actually about how 22 messes with people in the zone, and that's kind of the reason why the Knicks have sucked for so long. That makes sense. I just thought that was really clever the way they used the situations in this movie to explain real world situations. There's also this field where lost souls room, they kind of lose their way, and there's a connection to be made there with people who work nine to five jobs and feel hopeless. So if you could be here around nine, that would be great. I mean, everyone knows what it's like to be lost in that situation. We've all been there. You feel really disconnected from life. So eventually Joe and 22 do get sent back, but they get sent back to the wrong bodies. 22 ends up in Joe's body, and Joe ends up in a cat. Being a cat owner, I gotta be honest, the cat humor really worked for me. There's this one scene where Joe as a cat gets really tired as soon as he steps into this area of the rug that's in the sun. Turning those little moments in the life into comedy relief, that's kind of what Pixar does. I also 
also want to mention that there's a joke about a black guy not being able to get a cab and how most new souls being sent down are becoming self-absorbed. And both of those are just so 2021 to me. Through the course of figuring out how they're going to get out of this, 22 starts to experience the little pleasures in life. A key character, I think, in this story about self-realization is Joe's barber. Because if there's one thing we've been told is that barbers have all the wisdom. I was halfway expecting Cedric the Entertainer to come out, to be quite honest. Oh, they did it! But Joe's barber plants the seed in his head that sometimes things don't work out the way you think they're going to. And basically that it's okay if your passion isn't your whole life and you go in a different direction. 22 eventually learns the value of life through all these little interactions, and she doesn't want to go back. But they are eventually forced to go back because neither of them are supposed to be there right now. 22 eventually does find her spark, but Joe being stubborn, he pretty much says the only reason she found it was because she was in his body and living his life. This frustrates 22, and she just just gives up her past to Earth, which Joe eventually selfishly uses to go back to his own body. Joe does make it back in time to attend his gig, but afterwards he feels kind of unsatisfied. This is where this rush of moments just go through his head, and he sees all the little moments that he didn't appreciate before. His obsession was blocking all that out, and he couldn't appreciate the little things. And seeing 22 go through these new experiences for the first time really inspired him, and he realizes that he made a mistake. I really appreciated the fact that Joe Gardner kind of found his way through mentoring others even though he may have initially resisted it. So Joe has to go into the zone so he can find 22 and he has to convince her that she is ready to live. You see they established that your spark isn't your purpose. Your spark is simply your desire to live and experience these moments. Joe tells her that listen I had my time and it's yours now. It's time for you to go live your life. Once she accepts that and moves on Joe accepts his fate and he starts to move towards the light. But he's given a second chance chance to live because of his good deed with 22. So Joe can return to his life and he gets an opportunity that most people don't and that's where he can appreciate it more. I'm alive! I don't know, if you can't relate to that, then you might be dead inside. I think Soul has an amazing message, and it may go over some people's heads, especially children, but I think it will resonate with some adults who get caught up in aspects of their life to the point that it affects their general well-being. In the words of Columbus from Zombieland, You gotta enjoy the little things. Pixar has completely returned to form with Soul, in my opinion, and I can totally understand why it's getting the praise that it's getting. I don't think it's a movie that I would regularly watch, but I definitely think it's something that people of all ages should experience. For that reason, I'm going to give Soul a pleased Palpatine. Good. Good. So did you see Soul? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time right here on Real Shift. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Y'all be cool. Right on.